How did your April go? Did you do plenty? What did you achieve? Let us know in the comments below. Hello and welcome to the New Dig Norfolk Gardener, where we talk everything vegetables and New Dig. Now, if you're new to the channel, we live in the county of Norfolk and we live midway between the fine city of Norwich and the coastal town of Great Yarmouth. And our gardening zone is 9A. And for us, here in Norfolk, April has been really, really dry. We've seen very little in the way of rainfall. But what we haven't seen are any real frosts. Now, last April, we saw about 17 nights of really harsh frost, so minus five or more um, over the nights. We haven't seen anything like it this April. Um, indeed, I think the lowest we've got down to is about three degrees, plus three degrees, um, which clearly hasn't harmed any of the plants. And as you can see, everything is looking really, really lush and is growing well. Now the nighttime temperatures have been on the cool side, uh, as I say, that gets down to about five, six, seven degrees. Um, but by day, well, some days we've been seeing 17, 18 and 19 degrees. And you know, the coolest days really have only been about 12 or 13 degrees. So yeah, April has been quite a warm month and we certainly didn't see those April showers. So May. May is a time when growth really takes off. The temperatures should be rising throughout May, not just during the day, but also overnight. And it won't be too long before we get to a point where it won't drop below sort of 10 degrees on a regular basis. And then the plants really do grow. As we know, the daylight hours have certainly lengthened and combined with the warm temperatures and the lengthening days, the plants have more time to grow and to bring themselves on. If you've grown overwintering vegetables, things like purple sprouting broccoli, cabbages, anything like that, kale, they will be now starting to come to an end. And as they do, you'll need to clear them out the way, twist them out of the ground, however you choose to do that. And if you're a new dig like us, obviously spread your next layer of compost ready to receive the plants that hopefully, like us, you have ready in the greenhouse. The warmer temperatures is obviously going to benefit the vegetables that we are growing, but May is also sort of a time when weeds really accelerate and it's important that you keep on top of them. First and foremost, if you like us, keep the grass edges as tidy as you can. Um, I certainly try to look to uh, edge these edges with the edge and shears at least once a month but I do find at this time of the year it's generally twice a month to keep on top of it. As I say weeds are always going to be present no matter what method you use so just keep on top of those and keep pulling those out. Sowing for the month of May. Now we generally sow everything indoors under cover in modules. The only thing we don't are carrots and our parsnips which are sowed direct into the ground. But now we've got to May you can certainly start sowing things outside in the ground. You could last month but certainly this month you can if you so wish to. But for us this month under cover we'll be sowing things like Brussels sprouts and overwintering vegetables for next sort of February, March and April for their harvest. You can also be sowing your sweet corn and if you're a regular watcher of our channel you know we sowed our sweet corn in the last video that we did so it's right at the back end of April that we sowed ours but May is also a good time to sow your sweet corn. We shall also be sowing our basil and I always find the best time for us is sort of round about the first week of May so we should be sowing our basil during this coming week. Now around about mid-month that's the time to be sowing your beans whether they be runner beans or whether they be French beans. There's never no rush to sow these vegetables because they grow so quickly and so rampantly as soon as you more or less plant the seed and water it within the week it's up um, within two to three weeks you can have plants this tall with many many leaves and if you're not ready for them to go out yet 
they're just going to take up precious space on your potting bench. The other reason why it's a good idea to do it round about mid-month is because, you know, we could still get a frost this month. If you put your French beans out in particular and uh, we suddenly get, you know, quite a harsh frost, they will die. They will not survive. So you're much better to sow mid-month, plant out at the beginning of June when we know that all danger of frost has passed. And then they'll grow away. If we don't get any frost and you actually plant them out earlier, the ones that you actually plant in June, it won't take long before they catch them up because they grow so, so rampantly. The other thing for us is that right at the very end of this month, we shall actually be sowing our swede. And if you look at the seed packet, it tells you to sow at various times, um, but I'm not ready for mine to go out into the garden yet because they're going to be a follow-on crop for us. So they're going to go in a piece of ground where we're already growing something. But I find if we sow swede toward the end of May, and then it goes out in the ground sometime in June, probably towards the end of June, we still get nice swede that grow. Whereas April is more about sowing seed, and you can see we've sown lots of seeds, um, May is all about planting out. And things such as marigolds that you can see here, and the tagetes, and all the other flowers that we've been growing, much like the beans, they can go out toward the end of May beginning of June, when all danger of frost has passed, because they are susceptible to frost. There's also some pricking out to do, there'll be a lot of that. This is our celeriac, you can see it's now actually getting its first set of leaves, so that's a job that I should be doing later on today, is to prick those out. And as you can see, we've sown a few pak choy, cauliflower and calabrese, um, which will be a succession crop and they're actually going to go next to where the others are so that the harvest doesn't all come at once. Also, you'll be planting this month plants that are going to go in the greenhouse. So that'll include things like the peppers and the chilies and of course tomatoes. And I shall probably, probably go in uh, around about the second week of May, once this greenhouse is actually cleared. Again, there's no particular hurry. Everything will catch itself up. The other thing is that towards the end of the month and the beginning of June, depending on what your situation is and how your weather behaves, there'll be the cucumbers to go into the greenhouse the courgettes to be planted outside and the squash and again in the last video you saw me sowing this seed this is only a week on so you can see they germinate really really quickly because the temperatures have been very very good this April and they haven't taken long to germinate at all and then for us the other thing is the aubergines they're looking really good um, and they shall go into the greenhouse border same time as we pop in the tomatoes and the cucumbers. So there's things to plant outside, there's things to plant in the greenhouse. So really for May everything's sort of flipped itself. It's more about planting than it is sowing. There are still some things to sow this month, but that's sort of slowed down a bit to a gallop now, whereas April was all about sowing things. Now it's about getting these plants into the ground, whether it's in the greenhouse or whether it's out there in the garden, ready to get growing away. So harvesting, what can be harvested at this time during the year? Well, for us, we certainly have some lovely spring onions. These were put into the ground last September and well for the last month really they've been ready to harvest and they have a really nice size to give us an oniony taste while we're just waiting for the overwintering onions to be ready which should be toward the end of this month beginning of June and you can see they're already starting to bulb up and they'll continue to do that right the way through this month and into June
but also at the moment you can be harvesting your purple sprouting broccoli that will still be there to harvest overwintering brassicas things like cabbages and cauliflowers that you started off last year and are due to bring come to harvest and are due to come to harvest now they'll be ready to harvest spinach that can be harvested now. We've probably got another good month of getting good harvest from that before it's going to, going to be ready to rise to flower and go to seed. Also radish. Now, I think you saw me plant these radish about three weeks ago, I guess, into the ground. As you can see, they're now starting to put on some weight and it won't be long before we'll, we'll be able to enjoy those and our salads, stir fries. I actually just like coming out into the garden, picking them and eating them. Peas need regular maintenance. And for us, it's to keep adding the strings so they can climb up. Um, they were below this string when you saw them about a week or so ago. And this is the sort of growth they put on each week. And that will only accelerate more as the warmer days of May come into play. So you can see I've added another row of strings, so by the time we get to next weekend, they're going to be clinging on to this string. But if you've only just popped your peas out in April, they're probably starting to get to a size now where they will need some support. So if you haven't done that already, that's another job that we'll need doing, whether it be with pea netting, whether it be with canes, whether it be just with some old twigs and such. Uh, if you're growing a low growing variety. Now that I've sat down, Poppy's just sort of reminded me, only because she was sniffing around near where the potatoes were, that also this month, um, you're going to be looking to be earthing your potatoes up. And we have a way that we do ours, it's not done like it is traditionally, and we shall film that a bit later in the month if uh, you're wondering how you do that with new dig potatoes. Um, but if you do grow potatoes, uh, the traditional way, uh, toward the end of the month, you'll be looking to earth those up. Won't they, Poppy? Good girl. The other thing I've actually observed, which is different this year, is that, in fact, I can see one, the camera won't pick it up, but I can see it now flying over here over the potatoes, the cabbage white butterfly. It's here for us very early. We don't normally see it until toward the end of May and June. So it just goes to show you how mild it's been this spring um, and it's not been particularly wet. So what do we do in that situation, Poppy? If you haven't done so already, remember to cover your brassicas with appropriate coverings. For us, we use EnviroMesh. Um, but whatever you use, get some kind of netting over them because they can the caterpillars can absolutely decimate your crops within days if you haven't spotted that they're flying about. You know, you go away on a week's holiday or something and you come back to skeletons instead of plants. So there's plenty to be doing with in May, as you've heard. Um, let us know in the comments below the jobs that you'll be do doing during May. Um, we should be filming some of them as we go along and releasing them onto YouTube. So if you're new to gardening, don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, and then you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. But until the next video, take care.